We're going to represent the given function f of x equals one divided by the quantity one minus five x squared as a power series. Compute the first few coefficients of the power series and also find the radius of convergence. Notice how the given function here does not resemble the formula used to find the infinite sum of a converging geometric series. But the antiderivative of f of x will, so now we'll integrate f of x with respect to x. So we'll begin by integrating f of x with respect to x. So we want to find the integral of one divided by the quantity one minus five x squared with respect to x. Let's write this as the integral of the quantity one minus five x to the power of negative two. We'll have to perform u substitution here where u would be equal to one minus five x and therefore differential u is equal to negative five dx. So if we solve this for dx, we'd have negative one-fifth du equals dx. So we can think of this as u to the power of negative two integrated with respect to u, but we'll have an extra factor of negative one-fifth. So the antiderivative would be negative one-fifth times u to the power of negative one which should be the quantity one minus five x to the power of negative one divided by negative one plus c. Simplifying, we would have, notice positive one fifth times, we'd have one divided by the quantity one minus five x plus c. And notice how one divided by the quantity one minus five x fits the form of the formula used here to find the sum of a converging geometric series. So because this is the antiderivative of f of x, the derivative of this antiderivative would be f of x, which means f of x, the given function, or in this case the integrand, is equal to the derivative with respect to x of one-fifth times one divided by the quantity one minus five x. Of course, we can leave off the constant here, which means f of x is equal to the derivative with respect to x of one-fifth times the power series for this function, which would be the summation from n equals zero to infinity of a times r raised to the power of n, where a is one, and r would be five x. We'll simplify this power series and then find the derivative with respect to x on the next slide. We can write five x to the power of n as five to the nth times x to the nth. So we can write this as the derivative with respect to x of the summation from n equals zero to infinity of, we'd have five to the nth times x to the nth divided by five. This is five to the first, so we'll simplify here by subtracting the exponents. So we have f of x equals the derivative with respect to x of the summation from n equals zero to infinity of we'd have five to the power of n minus one times x to the power of n. Now we'll find the derivative of the power series with respect to x, which would be f of x equals the summation from n equals zero to infinity of, we'd have five to the power of n minus one, then we'd multiply by n, and then subtract one from the exponent, so we'd have x to the power of n minus one. So this would be the power series for our function. And now we'll generate the first several terms to find the desired coefficients. Notice when n is zero, the first term would be zero because of this n here. When n is one, we'd have five to the zero times one times x to the zero, which is one, plus when n is two, we'd have five to the first times two times x to the first, plus when n is three, we'd have five squared times three times x squared plus when n is four, we'd have five to the third 
times four times x to the third. And looking back at our question just for a moment, we need to find one more term, the degree four term, to find c sub four, the coefficient of the degree four term. So when n is five, we'd have five to the fourth times five times x to the fourth. Of course, this continues. Let's go ahead and simplify each term. Here we have one plus, this would be 10x, plus this would be 25 times three times x squared, 75x squared, plus five to the third times four times x cubed. That'd be 125 times four times x cubed. That would be 500x cubed. And then finally we have five to the fourth times five times x to the fourth. That'd be plus 3,125x to the fourth. So c sub zero is one, c sub one is 10, c sub two is 75, c sub three is 500, and c sub four is 3,125. Let's go ahead and record that. Again, one, 10, 75, 500, 3,125. And now to find the radius of convergence, Notice in this form here we can recognize that r, the common ratio, is equal to five x. And therefore, in order for the series to converge, the absolute value of five x must be less than one, which is equal to five times the absolute value of x less than one. Dividing both sides by five, we have the absolute value of x is less than one-fifth, and therefore the radius of convergence is one-fifth. This also tells us the interval of convergence would be the open interval from negative one-fifth to positive one-fifth. But again, we're only asked to find the radius of convergence, which again is one-fifth. Now before we go, let's take a look at the graph of the original function and the graph of the polynomial function that could be formed using the first five terms of our power series. And because this power series is centered at zero, we would call this a Maclaurin polynomial. We have the original function graphed here in blue and the polynomial function graphed here in red. And notice around x equals zero, the red polynomial function is a good representation of the original function, again, graphed in blue. We can also see the power series is centered at x equals zero. I hope you found this helpful.